was so powerful and we're finding a way to make a record of it and to to put it in some form that we can share with other people and she said well you know school starts at eight o'clock and kids are here at school six thirty security comes to school and the kids are already here waiting to get in your classroom they were excited about being part of the project yeah because they were participating in their own solution uh, the kids were yeah. participating in their own solution so after school during recesses uh, kids were involved in something that was meaningful for them. It's like bubblegum flavor toothpaste. Hey, something that catches on. <laughs> yes. The, uh, when she heard the story, she said, do you think that these kids would be willing to share this with the PTA? And I said, I don't know. I'll ask them. And what happened is I, I said to the kids, Dr. Eisen has invited us to share this story with uh, on PTA night, are you interested in doing that? And the kids said, yeah, we could take, because we had about 30 one-page how-to lessons for all the things that we talked about in this book, plus some. And the kids took three lessons, how to get along with grumpy people, okay. how to ask for help, Big one. how to handle peer pressure. Mm -hmm. How to get along with grumpy people, how to handle peer pressure, how to ask for help. And the kids made these little skits, and they got uh, music, and they they put on this show for the for the parents. And I got to thank That's parents. PTA night. Yeah, wow. I got to thank the parents for having these amazing children, who showed up to be helpful to their teacher. And at the end of the night, Dr. Ising came up to me, and she said, "Well." what do you want to do next? And the children had made this, this uh, little steno-sized notebook that uh, had 31 page how-to lessons for all the things that we talked about. And I said, well, give me money to make Xerox copies, right? So we can pass them out to the children uh, who are in the class. And she said, well, I have a better idea. She Dr. Said, Eisen. Yes. Okay. Yes, she's the visionary person in this story. Hmm. She said, we need to make enough copies for every kid in the whole school wow. to have their own book for self-help skills to keep kids safe. And this is what the first book looked like. Wow, can you make room for that? Self-help skills to keep kids. This is the very first one, 93, 94. That's it. And this has the one-page how-to lessons for all the things that the kids said they wanted help with. From that hmm. to this. Yes. How do we get from here to here? Okay, well, I wish I could say it was all smooth sailing, but actually, when the school year started and we had uh, this book, the first three weeks of school, we talked about setting a safe climate in the classroom, being respectful of one another, taking turns and listening, keeping mm. confidence. And what happened is, in a safe environment, as children started to share the reality and the honesty of their lives, we discovered that there was a range of serious issues that no one knew anything about. Uh, we had children who were being abused. We had children who were neglected. We, were, we had children who were struggling with life and death issues, both for themselves and family members. We also discovered that we, we didn't have access to enough adults that knew how to respond to children who are asking for help around such huge issues. Even though they're asking the right questions, there might not be the adults to provide the right answers in the right way. Yes, and so that created a lot of chaos. Once children opened up this can of worms and started telling the truth and the power of their lives, then it caused a ripple effect. Yeah, yeah. Yes? The truth is powerful. Yes, mm. and they had a lot of questions and we didn't have enough answers. I went in and I, I talked to the kids and I said, help me to understand if you have had these huge problems that you're dealing with, why didn't you ask for help sooner? This is what the kids said. The kids said, when you had a problem, who did you go to? And I said, I came to you. And they said, right. They said, kids talk to other kids because grown-ups talk too long use big words that we don't understand, and give us answers to problems that match the world you live in, but they don't match our world. Indubitously so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they told the truth. They were right on the mark. And I said, wow. I totally get it. I totally get it. And I went in and I met with Dr. Eisen, and I said, this 
this it's a great project and it's a good beginning but it's only a beginning because kids have lots of important questions that need deserve to be answered mm -hmm. and I said I'm going to take some time off and I'm going to see what else I can find out that is going to meet the needs of the children who are asking important questions and dealing with important issues. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. I went through 20 years of my teaching journals. I went through 20 years of homework assignments and writing assignments and notes and things that kids had written to me over the years. And I've saved some and carried them around with this project. Wow, actual. And I took it home and I laid out everything that I had and what I discovered is that these 160 kids had given me a model for a learning and teaching process that not only changed their lives, but changed mine as well. Changed my understanding and my attitudes for how to be an educator in the classroom. This is what I learned. I learned that kids need to be emotionally and physically safe this first. is the first book. Yes. Volume one. Yes. This book became this book. Okay. okay. Keep kids safe, self help, skills, skills. for kids. And this is for physical and emotional safety. Once kids are physically and emotionally safe, then they need information for how to lessons for self awareness who to trust, what to say yes to, what to say no to. When kids are safe, then they're self aware. Kids are then ready to have information and how-to lessons for how to have relationships and to be of service to others. And I, I got this by all the different things that I had collected over the years using Volume 1 as a model. Okay, so can I go back for just one second? Sure. So this first book it, it details and outlines how they can feel physically and emotionally safe yes. to begin with. Yes. So be in an environment that's not judgmental. Yes. Okay. And then where do they have, where do they get the vocabulary with which to speak that truth once they feel comfortable enough to share it? Which book is that? Is that the That's second? book one. That's still book one. That's okay. a book one. That's a book that says um, how to get along with grumpy people. Okay. How to ask for help. Okay. And Peer pressure. Yes. Okay. Yes and how to recognize and identify the different kinds of abuse. Mm -hmm. mm. All the things that kids identified early on. Those elephants in the living room, yes. they say, yeah, there's an elephant here, That's I need to correct. talk about it, I'm gonna talk about it, who can I talk to about it, uh, right? Right. Okay, and that leads into? Then that took us to recognizing that once their physical and emotional issues were addressed, then kids wanted to know, well, Okay, well now I'm safe. Now what now am I good what? at? Now, now what? What? Mm -hmm. what comes next? And that's how um, the information for self-awareness came, by looking through all their writing and homework assignments mm -hmm. and continuing to interview kids that I had access to. Oh, finding their light. Yes. Got it. Yes. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Thank wow, you. Wow, that's really cool. Okay, in the third book, I'm sorry, Relationships and Service to Others. Yes, once they're safe, once they're self-aware, then they're ready for relationships and service to mm, others. How can you be in relationship with someone else if you don't know who you are? Exactly. Mm. So with a lot of excitement and enthusiasm, I took these three books and I went back to as many of the 160 kids that I could find. And I said, do you remember some time back when we sat in the classroom for three days, I want to show you what has come about because of our time together. And I, I said, each book contains approximately 30 one-page how-to lessons mm -hmm. for things that you wanted information about. And they looked at the book and I said, what do you think? And they said, well, yeah, that's great, except you forgot something. And I said, well, what did I forget? Yeah, right. Mm. They said, you forgot to put something together about self-care because the people that are caring for us have to take care of themselves first. And I was like, uh -huh. uh, putting the, uh, the yes. mask on yourself before putting one on the child in the. So airplane. that's how we got the ABCs of self care. Mm. Now here is the exciting part of this project, and that is is that in a group setting in a classroom, kids at risk who have a lot of safety issues, those kids generally do not ask for help, nor are they inclined to read. Mm. 
but the kids who are safe and they have a sense of who they are and receive some learning for how to respond and how to be with other kids without shaming or judging them or blaming them.